If you had the ability to time travel and you decide to go back to the year 2001 and pick up some Bionicle sets from the year that this wonderful theme started, but you could only bring back five sets with you to the present day, well, how are you going to decide which ones you're going to bring back? Well, let's discuss now what my top five Bionicle sets are from 2001, as well as some honorable mentions, and let's see if they match up with your top five picks. Starting things off with the last pick, the number five spot, for me, it's the Nui Rama. So 2001 had so many good Rahi sets. But a lot of them were a little bit too expensive for me back in 2001, so I never actually got this set, unfortunately. Although I got it later in life, but boy, I remember thinking the Nui Rama were incredible as a kid. The lovely contrasting colours of lime and orange, so sick. And their bug-like appearance, that's rad. But the thing that grabbed me the most were their eyes. Using the Ruru mask, the same one that we see on Taraga Wenua, but this one is in dark trans blue and they use them for eyes instead of a mask. That blew my mind as a kid. I guess it was a really early introduction to the idea of clever building techniques or nice part usage. That was just so impressive to little Ben. Plus also, if I bought this set, I could have some trans dark blue Rurus. Imagine building a character that could wear that mask. It was just such a good idea to include those pieces in this set. And isn't that such a thing for a young child's mind being like, oh, that piece is pretty cool, but it also comes in a transparent color. It's way cooler now. That was just so captivating for me. But also the idea of an enemy for the Toa to fight that are just two large bugs. There's something so creative and fun about that. And also just the concept of these sets is so awesome. They have such a lovely classic Bionicle charm to them, which is just so magical. It really is the best. Man, also I remember staring at images of these sets in magazines and on lego.com for ages. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if I've just spent like hundreds of hours just staring at images of Lego, just as a child and probably even as an adult as well. I even remember as a kid going onto eBay hoping I could buy just this one set, you know? I wasn't really able to afford the other Rahi, but I'd made it up in my mind. I was like, all right, if I can buy this specific set, it's not going to be too expensive and I can get one of my favorites. Never ended up happening. Had to buy it later in life in college, but I ended up getting a good deal, so that's all that matters. But yeah, phenomenal set. Up next in the number four spot, we move over to my favorite Toa Mata set. It's Liwa Mata. Now look, all the Toa Mata are fantastic. Tahu is the goat, Kopaka with his awesome lone wolf personality and his sick scope eye mask. But I don't know man, Liwa always spoke to me. His beautiful translucent eyes, his incredible axe design. And I always thought this hand design that he had here looked dope. It was similar to say like Pahatu or Tahu's hand design, but the extensions on the fingers with those light gray tips. To me, I always saw those as guns that he could fire at enemies. And that just made Liwa a thousand times cooler. Plus we got Liwa's mask, the Miru. It's just sensational. There's a wonderful joyous energy to it and it looks so cool and free flowing. It captures the personality of Liwa very well. Such a good set, such a good mask, There's so much to love here. Oh, and mad respect to the canisters that the Bionicle sets came in as well. Some of the best Lego packaging we've ever got. The fact that it ties into the storyline and everything, and the fact you can take the top off and play with it as well as a, you know, actual attachment so you can put Lego pieces on with it. Genius design. Now, Liwa might be my favorite of the Toa Mata, but my very first Bionicle set was also a member of the Toa Mata. So, the number three spot, it goes to the one and only Gully. I still remember the day when Bionicle first came out. My brother and I were both very excited for it, and we had the whole day planned out. We were gonna go to this local indoor playground, you know, like a jungle gym with like ball pits and slides and places to climb and stuff. So we went there with my mum and, uh, you know, we just played pretending we were Bionicles the whole day. It was fun. Then after that, we went to the shops and we went to Kmart and we were going to buy our first Bionicle set. And I remember being so excited walking into the toy aisle and they had a big like cardboard standee with all the new Toa on it. It was so cool. And then when we got there, my brother and I were like, oh yeah, which one are we going to get? There's so many to pick from. What do we do? So we both actually ended up getting Gully. Then I remember we came home, built Gully, played with it for hours. And then I remember in the evening before bed, like reading over the posters and the papers that came with the set, learning about the lore, learning about the world, and I was hooked. So with all those memories of Gully, she certainly earns her spot in the number three position here. But also, she's just great. The cow cow mask that she wears, looking like a scuba diving mask or some sort of helmet of sorts, brilliant. These hook weapons, they're the best. And of course her gear functions so that she can move her arms and attack bad guys, brilliant. I very much appreciate this set for hooking me into Bionicle and starting things off. You know, hey, if that day hadn't happened and I hadn't bought Gully, Maybe I wouldn't be posting Bionicle videos today. Now over to the number two spot. It goes to another set that I wasn't able to buy back in the day. It's 8548 Nui Jaga. 
I used to really love scorpions as a kid, I just thought they looked awesome. And so a Bionicle scorpion? Even better! I remember desperately wanting to own this set, even if it was just for the cool masks that came in this set. These two purple Pakari and these two medium blue Pakari? Oh, so awesome. Those were a big deal back in the day. And then the cool play features that this set had, how the tail can like strike a Toa and actually knock their mask off. Such a good design. Oh, and then we can't forget. Playing the Mata Nui online game where there's the level where Patu has to fight one of the Nui Jaga, but it ends up blinding him, so you gotta help him out. Yeah, I'd play that level, and I remember being genuinely a little bit scared of the Nui Jaga. I was like, oh man, they're a threat, and they're really hard to beat. Like, wow. And then I remember thinking how fun it would be to go and buy that set and then recreate that battle between the Pahatu I already had and the set that I really wanted. I was obsessed. The heated rivalry between these two characters was electric. Like I knew what they were doing with everything they were doing for the marketing here. They made me desperately want to buy these sets. And I think there's something so lovely and precious and nostalgic about the sets that you really wanted as a kid, but you couldn't get them until you were an adult. That childlike excitement about owning them, that's cool, isn't it? Yeah, thankfully I own this set now and it felt so, so good to finally get it. But hey, to go back in time and to grab one mint sealed in box off of the shelf, that would be pretty magical as well. So almost time for the number one spot, but first let's talk about five honorable mentions. First up is Onipu, and honestly, every other McDonald's McTorrin as well. I still remember the day that my dad came home from McDonald's with some Happy Meals for us, me and my brother, and then he gave us a sealed poly bag with uh, this Matoran right here. And he was like, yeah, the Happy Meal toys now are some Bionicle ones. And me and my brother, we were like, nah, man, don't lie to us. That's not true. You just went to the shops, you bought this, and then you got some McDonald's and you came home. And my dad was like, no, no, that's, no, they're just the toys in the Happy Meal. And then we were blown away. We we're like, what? Lego in McDonald's toys? This is the best. And then we proceeded to buy a lot more uh, Happy Meals and get a lot more Bionicle sets. It was a great time. Although I remember, despite lots of searching, I was never actually able to get Hooky. Still to this day, I own every other McTorrin except for Hooky. It's the one that got away. But yeah, dude, I long for the day that LEGO returns to McDonald's in Happy Meal toys, because it was such a fun time, it would be great to recreate that magic now. Although I don't think that partnership would ever happen today. But still, it was very exciting back in the day, and these Matoran looked great. Next up are the mask packs. You know, whether they're the boxes or whether they're the poly bags, either one, it doesn't matter, it's just the idea of mask packs. Because as a kid, I only ever got one of these. I remember seeing them in the shops like one or two times, but otherwise they were never available. And that sucked because these blind packs that allow you to get unique masks, oh, it was so, so, so cool. And mate, I would buy a thousand of these if they came out today when I was an adult and had money to spend on them. These were like holy grail items to me as a kid because I was so excited at the magic of like, well, what am I going to get? And masks were so cool. They're still so cool. I wish I could buy some more of these now to like recreate that magic, but just for one of these mask packs, it's annoyingly expensive. And then sometimes too, you can also open them up and get like really, really common masks and then you kind of just waste your money. So it's not really worth it, which is a shame because I'd love to do a video of just unboxing a bunch of these. That'd be so much fun. But yeah, way too expensive to do that, sadly. But still, the coolest idea and the most exciting thing back in 2001. And on the subject of sets that I never really saw, I never saw the Turaga for sale in Australia. And my favorite of them was definitely Turaga Vakama. I remember wanting him and all of the others really badly. But yeah, never saw them on store shelves. I'm sure they released here, but I guess they just sold out and then were never really distributed again. And then I remember I was at one of my friend's houses playing with their Lego, and then I saw that they had some of the Turaga, and I was like, yo, where did you get these? And he was like, oh, we went on a family trip to America and I bought them there. And I was like, yeah, of course you did. The promised land, the fabled America that has all the rare Lego. It's not really the case anymore. It's a lot more Lego that's brought to Australia these days. Although there's a lot more cool places that you can buy Lego that uh, you just can't in Australia but America has a lot of that cool stuff. I guess that's where my uh, desire to buy Lego in America started to form as a child. But still, the Turaga were the best. It's a shame that I never saw them for sale. Another honorable mention goes to Muaka and Kanra. Another iconic set that I remember staring at on toy shelves for ages, dreaming of owning, but just couldn't afford it. This very Technic heavy set was so freaking cool. And the fact that you also got some of these brilliant masks, like a black Hoona, but the real highlight, the infected Howl. So sick. That was another mask that as a kid I desperately wanted. So yeah, a brilliant set that I did actually buy later in life and I love it so much. And now the final honorable mention, it goes to a set that was never actually released, but it's still super cool. It's the Sand Tarakava. Now let me read you the story behind this model. So. Wikipedia says the following. The physical model representing the San Tarakava was a prototype for the retail Tarakava set, 
provided to Sapphire Incorporated, and it was given to them by the Lego Group. And they got it in order to assist them with the development of Bionicle The Legends of Matanui video game. The prototype was later sold on eBay by a former employer of Sapphire, Darvel D. Hunt was their name, and he won it in a team bowling tournament. The prototype included treads, as well as a noble yellow ruru and a dark grey claw used for the lower jaw. And these were never released in sets, they were exclusive pieces. That's so cool, I love that story. Especially because some random dude was winning it in a bowling tournament and then was like, whatever, I'll just sell it off. Random dudes who don't know what they have and then sell off rare Bionicle collectibles? That's like Lego buying folklore, that's cool as heck. And I love rare oddities like this, and the story of the sand Tarakava just makes it more exciting than the normal Tarakava set. That being said, the normal set is pretty cool as well. That's actually another one that I still don't own today and would love to own. And I do like the rarity of some of the stuff in this set, so it's just a little bit cooler. All right, that's it for the honorable mentions. Now we go to the number one spot. The first set that I'm grabbing when I head back to 2001, the number one spot, it goes to 8539 Manas. So the Manas Crab. This is one Rahi Titan set that I love and still love so much to this day, but I still don't own it today. It's pretty much at the top of my list of Bionicle sets that I want to buy, because man, I adore this so much. And why is the Manus Crab the best set ever? Because they're crabs. End of story, thanks for watching, bye for now. But okay, yeah, obviously they have a cool remote control function where they can crawl around and attack you with their little crab pincers. Nothing says cool quite like motorized remote control Bionicle crabs. That might be the coolest sentence I've ever said. I'm going to say it one more time because it's really cool. Motorized remote control Bionicle crabs. That's so sick. And hey, two yellow Komaos and two orange Rurus? More reason to buy this beautiful set, the exclusive beautifully colored masks. Yeah, this set just looks awesome. Such a good play feature. I want it so badly. The Manus Crab is wonderful. So that's a list of my top five favorite sets from 2001 Bionicle and five honorable mentions as well. If you traveled back to 2001, the birth of Bionicle as a Lego theme, would you pick up the same sets? No, would you pick up some different ones? Well, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear which ones you would want to pick up. Thanks for watching guys. Happy building and bye for now.